Hi, everyone. We hope you guys are having a fantastic day out there. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is Mr. Tiska with you once again. And once again, I'm joined by Mrs. Kraft. Mrs. Kraft, how are you today? Super excited. We got some good stories to tell you. Oh, we do. We do. We also have Ms. Hoff with us. Ms. Hoff, how are you? I am excellent. Perfect. All right, guys. So today we're going to be doing Chapter 3, Section 2, The New England Colonies. Now, the big idea for today is that English colonists traveled to New England to gain religious freedom. And the main ideas that we're going to talk about are how the Pilgrims and the Puritans came to America to avoid religious persecution. Religion and government were closely linked in the New England colonies. The New England economy was based on trade and farming. And education was important to the New England colonists. Main so, idea one. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay, Miss Craft. Main <laughs> idea one. The Pilgrims and the Puritans came to America to avoid religious persecution. So before we even get started in this, there's a backstory. So imagine all of the people in England once upon a time were all of the same religious affiliation. And they were all Roman Catholic. And the man that was the king at the time was a guy named Henry VIII. Now, Henry VIII was married, um, believe it or not, six different times. But he was married for a really long time to his first wife, whose name was Catherine of Aragon. Now, when I tell you, history's got the best stories in it, and it's stuff that you can't make up, this is it. So um, King Henry's older brother was a guy named King Arthur. And I think his name was to Arthur. Anyway, he died and he was married to Catherine of Aragon. So the king's father says, Henry, I want that you should marry your brother's, your dead brother's wife. So Henry marries Catherine of Aragon. So they stay married for a really long time. And she doesn't give him a boy baby. And he needs a boy baby to be the heir of the throne. So he, he said they're married 23 years. And finally, he says, I can't stay married to her um, because she wasn't making babies anymore. So I need to find me a wife that can give me a boy baby. Now, King Henry was like defender of the faith. He was big into being Catholic. So he goes to the Pope, who's the head of the Catholic Church. And he's like, your pope I need a divorce. And the Pope is like, Henry, what are you, crazy dude? Don't you know who your wife's parents are? Psst. The wife's parents are actually King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. It sounds like you remember this from Christopher Columbus, I hope. Anyway, so he's like, they're like tearing up the whole new world. They're spreading my religion. They're all that in a bag of chips. I can't let you break their little baby girl's heart. So he says to him, no divorce. So King Henry's like, what do you mean no divorce? I'm the king of England. I want a divorce and you can't stop me. So you know what? We're not even going to be Catholic anymore. I'm the king of England. That's right. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my own church and I'm going to name it the Church of England because I'm the king of England. Yes, fast forward, that Church of England becomes the Episcopal Church. Now, King Henry, back to his crazy story. So he gets divorced from Catherine of Aragon. And then he marries a woman named Anne Boleyn, who Anne Boleyn, he says, he got tired of her. He's like, yeah, she's not doing it for me. So he ends up saying that she committed treason. So you know what he does? Mr. Tiska, Mr. Tiska, you know what he does? What does he do? He has her beheaded. He yes. has her beheaded? He has her head chopped off. Oh, oh. I know. Now, the third wife he marries happened to have actually have been, I think, his second wife's lady-in-waiting, which I don't really understand that concept, but it's, I guess, people that are, like, helping your queen. Anyway, long story short. Her name is Jane Seymour. So Jane Seymour has a baby boy. Woo -woo! He's so excited. But guess what? She dies within days of having birth. So it's like a couple of weeks later and that wife is dead. So now he stays single for a little while and everybody says to him, you know what? Your next wife should be really more of a political alliance. So he marries this woman, Anne of Cleves from Germany. 
she comes to America, uh, she comes to England and she meets with him and he's like, ooh, she is not really very pretty. So he says, I don't want to be married to her. And they're like, dude, you have to be married to her because like, this is a German and it, a English alliance. You have to do this. So long story short, he marries her, but doesn't really marry her. Um, so she stays in the castle and they call her Aunt Anne. <laughs> so anyway, and then she kind of lives like she's his sister, not his wife. Then marries another woman named Catherine Howard. And he really liked her, but she was in love with somebody else. And then she ends up still having a relationship with the man that she was in love with. King Henry finds out. And you know what happens if you cross the king, don't you? Beheaded. 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 That's right. Yes, she beheaded. gets her head chopped off. Now, the last one is Catherine Parr. Now, Catherine Parr, hmm, ironically, had already had two husbands die while she was married to them. She marries Henry and guess what? Henry dies. So when you get to ninth grade, if you're lucky enough to have Miss Fallon in ninth grade, not our Miss Fallon from the middle school, but there's another Miss Fallon that teaches at the high school. And she teaches this really fun song, uh, divorced, beheaded, and died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. And it goes on like that. It's super fun. I so remember that really song. Did you have Miss Fallon? I did not have Miss Fallon, but I sung that song in my time in Cerebral High School as well. Yep, it's crazy. So now all of the people that once upon a time were Catholic have now been forced to become um, Protestant. And that's what opens up the door to these pilgrims that once upon a time were living happy lives in England. But then they left England because they were being punished. The word persecuted means punished. So they were being punished for, for not believing in the king's religion. So a lot of them went to, where they go, Mr. Tiska, the they, Netherlands? They went to the Netherlands, that's right. And so they're living their lives, their best lives, and they can practice their religion, but like they're wearing wooden shoes and like pulling tulips up. So it's like the trade-off. You can have your religion, but then you're not English, or you could stay in England and be English, but not have your religion. So and what do you do? And then what about the young kids that they brought over to the Netherlands? Were they even remembering that they were English? No, it was completely foreign to them. So the pilgrims were like, oh, this is not good. We need to have our cake and eat it too. So they decide they're going to hop on a ship and they're going to go to Jamestown. Spoiler alert, they get lost. I know it's like the, the ocean is not well marked. It doesn't say make a left here and you get to Jamestown. You mean and there's no GPS? And by the way, by the way, the reason the Pilgrims wanted to go to Jamestown is, as you guys know from our last screencast, Jamestown was the first permanent English colony. So Jamestown at this point was a successful colony, and the Pilgrims felt it would be easier just kind of building off what they had done rather than starting their own little colony. Yep, too bad. They got lost, and they decided, well, it was meant to be that they go where they go. And they end up in a place called Plymouth Plantation, which is in Massachusetts. Now, yesterday we talked about all these different colonies, but just so you know, chronologically, which means in time order, the first one is 1607, it's Jamestown. And then in 1621, it's the Pilgrims in Massachusetts. The rest of the Southern colonies don't get filled out until after that. But right. we try to keep it in region for you to make it more sense. And also in 1630, there's going to be another group that leaves England as part of what's called the Great Migration. See, England wasn't the best place to live because not only did you have all of this religious persecution, you had all these people being punished for what they believed in, but you also had very high taxes. So another group called the Puritans wanted to leave England. Now, actually, before they wanted to leave England, their goal was to reform or change the Church of England, which was also known as the Anglican Church. That didn't really work out so well for them in England. They were uh, punished and persecuted and made fun of. So they decide to just leave. They leave and they're going to travel all the way to Boston. Now, once they get to Boston, 
And they're going to set up their own colony, which is going to be known as Massachusetts Bay Colony. And um, they were actually, unlike the settlers at Jamestown, they were very wealthy and very prepared. And they settled their colony and didn't really have too many issues to start out. Yeah, if you compare them to the Pilgrims, the Pilgrims came with one ship. There was 100 people there, and they were sacrificing everything they had to make this work. And if it wasn't for the Native Americans, you, you know the first Thanksgiving story is all about um, – uh, it's all about how the pilgrims were helped by the Native Americans. The Puritans came to America in 11 ships. They were a thousand people strong. They came with a herd of cows. They came with horses. They came with all kinds of equipment. These people were not messing around. They were going to be successful. And by the way, they all heard the stories of how miserable it was in Jamestown to start out and how many problems they ran into. And they decided, you know what? That's not going to happen to us. We're going to come prepare. We're going to bring farmers and people who know what they're doing, and we're going to do our best to set up the colony that we want to set up. So we have these two groups. We have the Pilgrims and we have the Puritans. Now, as Mrs. Kraft said, when the Pilgrims came over, they had a bunch of different problems um, and most notably, one of the big problems was they couldn't get anything to grow. So luckily for them, a Native American known as Squanto actually came and showed them how to fertilize the soil. FYI, when we say fertilize the soil, we mean basically squishing fish guts together and planting them in the ground. Imagine how disgusting that is. Yeah. And eventually, Squanto introduces them to the local Native American group known as the Wampanoag. And the Wampanoag teach them all sorts of different things, most notably how to grow crops off of the land. Because the land that they are on is not like the land in the southern colonies. It's not fertile. It's rocky. And the weather is even worse. So it's really hard to get things to grow. But eventually, because of the Wampanoag, the pilgrims are able to grow all of these crops and they're going to have a celebration to celebrate their first harvest. And that celebration is going to be called the first Thanksgiving. And that was a pretty important moment because that pretty much um, let it be known that this colony was going to be a success. All right. Main idea number two, religion and government were closely linked in the New England colonies. So uh, they established a general court to run the Massachusetts Bay Colony. So the colonists had established this, this general court that basically turned into a type of self-government. Each colony sent a representative and John Winthrop was chosen as the first governor. Only male church members could vote. So sorry, ladies. And they did not allow freedom of religion. Uh. All right. All right. That's all we are going to do today for this episode. So we are actually, we'll pick this up in our next screencast. Mrs. Kraft, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I can't wait to tell you about the rest of the colonists that settle in New England. I heard Miss there's Hoffman. something about witches that you're going to talk about, Mrs. Craft. Ooh, witches? I want to talk about witches. Um, so we will talk to you guys soon. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.